Hey there guys, thanks for joining me for episode 21 of Mortal Realms Monday. Now, as you may have noticed with issue 21, uh, we got some models, uh, the Dreadside Haridans. However, it was only a, a couple of weeks ago that I painted one of these up for you. So I thought this time round, rather than painting another one, we'll go with painting this little fellow from issue 19, I believe it was. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at how I painted this guy with a nice, quick and easy paint job. Let's get to it. Right, so first of all, you can see I've gone ahead and primed the model in white. And I'm now taking some ethermatic blue and just applying this over all of the night haunt uh, ghostly areas. So basically anything that looks like cloak and cloth. Um, from the over his arms and under his uh, back armor there anything from there downwards is uh, the ethermatic blue uh, what I'll do during this step whilst the paint is still wet I will go ahead and rinse my brush and with the brush being wet I'll just uh, remove some of the excess paint at the bottom um, just to bring it back to a little bit of a, a white with a very pale blue touch to it but leaving some of that uh, blue in the, the deeper pockets and the recesses down there and then once this is dry I can then move on to the next step and you'll notice there that the uh, the arm came off the arm when I received this model had already broken off and I had fixed it twice uh, you may notice in the video at the beginning and the one at the end that he has a, a bit of a blob of uh, super glue around his arm uh, unfortunately the arm on this guy is so thin I could not get a drill bit small enough or a piece of wire small enough to um, pin his arm back together again. Um, I was considering maybe cutting the sword down a little bit and making it as though his arm had snapped off and the sword had jabbed into the ground but I wasn't too sure on that so for now the arm is glued back into place by the end of the, uh, the video but for now I'll just uh, keep him out of the way. Right, so once all the ethermatic blue is done, I'm now taking some Nighthaunt Gloom, and you can see this is just straight out of the pot. And I'm going to apply a couple of coats uh, over sort of the top half to the top third of the model. Um, I will again use the water technique to thin it down as it comes to about halfway, as I want this uh, the darker part on the the top third but I do want a nice bit of transition as it comes into where the ethermatic blue is. So uh, we'll jump on ahead to once this is dried and you can see for the uh, the next step. Right, so we've got some white scar and all I'm going to do with this is just a very uh, heavy dry brushing on the bottom third of the model here and the idea is to get the the bottom area to almost white um, with a heavier dry brush and then just uh, ease off the pressure slightly and not have as much paint on the bristles as I come further up the model and what this will do is give a little bit of a gentle uh, fade off towards the uh, the ethermatic blue you can see here that I'm going over the Nighthawk gloom slightly um, this is just to add some highlights or a, a base for the highlights to come so you'll see that in the next step which we will jump to now all right so next up i take a 50 50 mix of nighthawk gloom and ethermatic blue and then just add a little bit of water to that and what i'm doing here is applying it all over the the top half of the model focusing more around the top what this will do is stain the highlights slightly with that uh that mix so that the highlights won't be white they will be this slightly stained color and then secondly this is as it's a 50 50 mix is a mid-tone between the ethermatic blue and the nighthawk gloom which will allow for um, a nicer blend uh, between the two so once that's dried it's now onto the eschen gray and for this I'm just applying it to the uh, the base bit of stone uh, that you can see along down on the bottom here 
as well as this uh, slab just next to the skull here not a lot to go with it really like I said just uh, some nice simple paint color scheme uh, just to get a uh, bit of a quick quick paint job get you get you guys on the field as uh, quick as possible obviously taking care not to get this onto any of the white areas that I'd already done but yeah nice and easy all right next up is some Balthazar gold and I like to use this for a uh, sort of a brass or bronze copper effect um, any any one of those sort of darker metals um, that funny enough isn't gold but uh all I'm doing with this is just applying uh, a couple of coats over the entire uh, staff here um, and all of the lantern part on top obviously being careful not to get it onto the the flame that comes out of the lantern uh, this would also be used on the uh, the handle and the cross guard for the sword as well as his mask he's got the um, it's sort of it's he's got this ringed part with the the front face mask that comes down and then goes up to a point um, above his head so that will be this as well as his back armor and he's also underneath his mask and sort of crown I suppose you could call it um, he's got a black hooded cloth type thing um, you can tell this is that it's attached to the robe um, on two of the corners so I'll go ahead and paint all of those in the Balthazar gold and we'll be back in just a tick and so now it's time to take some Abaddon black and paint up those uh, small cloth areas that I mentioned uh, a second ago so it's just the the cloth down here you will be able to see it if you're following along and if you take a look at the model you can see that it is a cloth that comes from his head especially here you can tell that it's been torn and is uh, sort of drooping down and then it's pinned to his uh, his over robe or cloth whatever you want to call that bit so obviously just uh, taking this and painting the inside as well as well as the the dome that covers the top of his head so just a nice little bit of black here and uh, that will be this part done okay so now just some Ushapti bone to uh, paint the small skull at the base of him there or what he is, appears to be coming out of and uh, once that's dry we'll move on to the next step all right, so now I'm going to take some lead belcher and just paint up this railing here as well as the uh, the blade of the sword itself. So if you, uh, you're keeping track of paint counts, this will be paint number or colour number seven that we are using here. Now for the greys, you could save yourself um, a couple of paints and just use a mix of black and white to get your uh, eshing grey or a you know a, a darker grey and then add a little bit more white to get a lighter grey for a highlight um, but you know I've got the pots of paint so you know I may as well use them but if you are somebody that likes to you know use minimal paints or hasn't quite got the other ones yet then just mix up some black and white for your greys right so I'm now taking some of the eshing grey and I'm just using this as an edge highlight for the uh, the black cloth here um, usually I would use something with a little bit more blue mixed into it but as we're keeping uh, the paint job as simple as possible and uh, you know minimum colors then I'm just going in with the eschen gray for this and then I'll highlight that again later on okay so taking some dawnstone and this is going to be the final highlight for the uh, the hood area and the uh, the stone at the bottom of the ruins here now as I said earlier if you want to save on paints then uh, just mix up some black and white and you can replace the eschen grey and the dawnstone with you know a couple of mixes of the the black and white so instead of going for 12 to 15 paints you'll be now taking yourself down to 10 paints so nice and simple
Right, so I'm now taking some Nihiloc Oxide and I'm just going to age up the uh, the bronze and brass slightly, uh, whatever colour you want to call this. Um, now this step, again, if you are trying to use minimum amount of paint, um, you know that you don't want to go out and buy a bunch of colours, then this is one that you could leave out and uh, as it is just more of a, an ageing effect on the the metal areas it's not something that is needed um, I'd say aside from painting the the flame the model is essentially done at this point um, so yeah you can skip this step or if you want to apply it then uh, just do as I'm doing here you can see that I'll apply it into areas that I want the sort of the build up of it and then I'll just dab it away slightly with my my finger and what this will do is give it more of a dull um, greyish tinge to the, the to the paint when it dries and then I can then go back over those spots and apply a little bit more and that will take the nylock colour a little bit better um, as once this dries it does tend to dull down quite a bit so if you get it to dull down first then when you apply it over the top it actually stays that little bit brighter um, and then obviously you get a bit of variation in uh, tone between it as well. Right, so I'm now taking some hex ray the flame and just applying this uh, over the the flame here or the smoke, whatever you want to call it. And with this step, you could essentially um, apply this over all of the white and leave it be. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I say, it's a nice, quick, easy paint job. Uh, but personally, I wanted to take it just a little, little bit further, um, which we'll see in the upcoming step once this first layer has dried. Right, so next up I'm going to take some Phalanx Yellow and some White Scar. And this has been mixed a very, very small amount of Phalanx Yellow to the white. Um, I don't want a strong colour, this is meant to be just sort of a very pale yellow or an off-white and you can see here I'm just dry brushing over the uh, the bottom areas and a little bit towards the top now this isn't a full dry brush in the sense that as you can see I'm not removing a huge amount of paint um, on paper towel or anything but there isn't a huge amount of paint on the wet palette there so this is just enough just to uh, color up the sort of the bottom half and the, the tail end of the flame there. And once I've got a bit of a, a, a brighter yellow glow to that, we can uh, let that dry and move on to the next step. All right, so you can see now I'm using just a slightly bit more um, of that yellow in that mix. And just going over again some of the areas um, sort of mainly towards the points of the the flame. Now once that has uh, dried, it doesn't take too long, I'm now going back in with the hex wraith flame to bring that more back towards a green tone and the the yellow undertone will give the green a little bit more of a, a vibrant glow uh, which is what I wanted to be toward the end of my my flame and essentially the model here is done. Um, just to finish it off slightly I'm going to add some rust effect to the um, the railing and the sword so all I've done is taken a stippling brush and some Mornfang Brown and just stippled that over the, uh, the brush slightly and I'm now taking some orange and a little bit of the yellow just to get a bit of a paler orange and applying that over the Mornfang Brown just to give that a um, little bit of a rust effect to the metals. Again, these are two colours that you don't need to use um, if you are looking for just um, some basic painting, but this is something I wanted to add, just an extra little bit of detail. Um, and aside from that, the model is finished. All right, and there we have it, guys, the finished model. As you can see, I've gone ahead and... Um, Put some detailing on the base there um, whatever it is you want to do for that is entirely your choice 
Um, but like I say, the point of this video was just to show you that you don't need a huge amount of paints to get a half decent paint job for the tabletop. Um, like I said, this was 12 to 15 paints and you could probably knock about four of those, five of those colors off and uh, you know, go for 10 paints, 10, 11 paints. So uh, yeah, that's the end of today's video guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you like the look of the model. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button uh, just down below and that will help, uh, help me get around YouTube's uh, algorithm, get me noticed, noticed a little, little bit more and get a little bit more publicity for the channel. And if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscription button and uh, that way you can keep up with new videos when they're released. Uh, which obviously for Mortal Realms Monday is every Monday and I also have an Indomitus series every Wednesday uh, focusing on the Indomitus box set um, which I suppose you could now say is also the uh, the models from the three new starter sets uh, for Warhammer 40k so if you're a 40k fan then I've uh, got some 40k stuff for you but until next time guys thanks ever so much for joining me Take it easy and keep painting those minis.